How do you test your domain when event sourcing? You may find it surprising, but I actually find it easier to test when event sourcing than if I were recording current state. I'll explain how and illustrate with some test code. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So I've already covered what event sourcing actually is. So check out that video if you need kind of a primer, but I'm gonna go through the actual flow of how events get created and persisted because in the middle is what our actual domain is and it's what's creating the events. So let's run through that flow. So the first thing that actually happens when we're talking about event sourcing is we're recording events as facts, things that have happened. Our event stream is gonna be in the case of my example right now related to a product in a warehouse. So for a particular individual SKU, say ABC123, we're gonna have a series of events that have happened for that particular SKU, that particular product. So my example that I'm using here, maybe we have, we received uh, 10 of the products on a particular day we received five more of them, so now we have 15 in the warehouse. Uh, maybe we shipped six out, so now we have nine. And then we ended up doing an inventory adjustment where we added 50 more that we magically found somewhere in the, uh, the warehouse, so now we have 59 on hand. So our on hand count is actually 59, but the real point of truth is this event stream is a series of events there are facts or things that have happened for this particular SKU to get us to where we are right now. So here's the application flow that I typically have in an application when using event sourcing. So we have some client code that's gonna call a repository. What our repository is gonna do is it's gonna actually call the event store to get back all the events that have occurred for that particular SKU, that particular product, ABC123. What it's then gonna do, it's gonna replay those events within the, an aggregate that it's gonna build up, and then it's gonna pass that aggregate back to the client code. So that at that point, our client code can interact with our domain, which is our aggregate, to perform various actions on it, to basically invoke commands within our aggregate. So our aggregate exposes commands. When our client code needs to do something, say for example, one of the commands that we have available, and when I'm using commands here, I'm more referring to the CQS sense, where a method is either a command or a query. A command is something that's going to make a state change. A query is gonna be something that returns state. And generally my aggregates for the most part just have uh, commands in them. And one of the commands that I have in my product, my warehouse product that I'll be showing here is a command called ship product. So what happens when our client code calls ship product on the aggregate, if it's something valid that can be done based on the state of the aggregate, what it's gonna do is it's internally gonna record that a product shipped event has occurred. And then likewise, I have other stuff like receive product. So if that command also gets called within the same client code, then another event will be added, appended to the end of the event list that's occurred so far, saying product received. So our aggregate is basically the one um, exposing commands. And if those commands are successful, what it's doing at that point is creating other events that it's gonna append to the event stream. So what this looks like is once our client code is done interacting with our aggregate, our domain, it passes that back to the repository. The repository at that point is gonna see, oh, there's two events that you just created within that aggregate. Let's append those, let's add them to the event stream in our event store. Testing your domain means testing your aggregate. And you can do so by really thinking about the flow that I just illustrated. If you're thinking about the aggregate, given a series of events or given your event stream, when you perform a valid command on your aggregate, then new events occur. That's obviously the happy path, but the error path is very similar, where given a series of events, if I call something on my aggregate in an invalid state, then I'm either dealing with some error result or an exception. All the code I'm about to show is available to my developer level members of my channel. So if you're interested in joining, go to my channel, click the join button for more info. So here's the warehouse product aggregate that I have, which is really just the aggregate root because it's really the only domain object in this. And I have three different commands. I have ship product, receive product, and adjust inventory. Now these commands are actually what hold our invariance. So in ship product, what we have is if we're trying to ship more than what we actually think we have on hand, uh, then we throw an exception, this invalid domain exception. Now this warehouse product state is the current state of our aggregate of what our warehouse product look like. And I have this apply method that's keeping track of that. So when our repository actually pulled out all the events to replay them, what it's doing is it's calling apply uh, for the relevant method to get us back to current state. So we know what our current state is and we can have this invariant here. 
And then if it's valid, what we're doing is we're creating a new event. So at this point I'm saying, okay, uh, we're creating a new product shipped. We're gonna call the apply method to update our current state. And then we're calling add, which is basically just adding it to a list that our repository will use later to then add or append to our actual event stream. So to test this, I'm gonna first show my crude method, which is kind of doing more an arrange act assert method of doing this. So I have my warehouse product that I'm loading with initially just one event, uh, our product received, which is some random quantity. Then to test our ship product, what I have is I'm calling ship product with just, again, another random amount. And what I'm doing to assert is that I'm looking at the events that were added to our aggregate. And this get uncommitted events is ultimately what our repository uses to add those events to our event stream. But we're getting all the events out to see, was there a product shipped event um, in that list? And if there was, then we assert that things like the quantity and the SKU are what they should be. And then test the invariant, I have this other test method, which is checking to see that we can't ship more than we actually have. So I'm just calling my uh, act here on ship product where I'm sending more than what our actual quantity on hand is to make sure that we actually get that invalid domain exception. So I have test methods for basically each command and each invariant. And as you can see here, there's just kind of a lot of fluff to try to figure out was an event actually created in our aggregate. So we can simplify this a lot and get more to that original statement of that given when then, which is given a stream of events, when I perform some command on my aggregate, then some events are created. So let's simplify this and make this a little bit easier to look at. So I created a aggregate test base class that just makes life easier. So it has four methods. The first is given, which we pass a params of I event. So we pass all those events to our aggregate root which is ultimately just iterating over them and calling apply method to get us to current state. Our when, we uh, pass an action, which is just a way to specify which command, which method on our aggregate we actually wanna call. The then method takes a params of our conditions that we want to pass to shouldly. I'm using shouldly, but this is just basically actions of the particular event that we're getting out so we can test all the properties on it. And then I'm also passing t event as a type parameter so we confirm what the actual event is outbound that we think should uh, get created. And then lastly here I have throws, which is kind of doing a two in one. It's calling the actual command our method on our aggregate, but because we need to capture that exception, I'm also passing that particular condition in so we can verify whatever it is on the exception that we're expecting to happen, happens. So here's what our tests refactored look like using that base class. So for our ship product should raise the product shipped event, what we're saying is given this event has occurred, when we actually call ship product, which is some random amount, then the product shipped event is created and it has these particular properties set accordingly. And then for our invariant, we're saying given no events have occurred, our event stream is basically blank. When we call ship product with a quantity of one, then we are actually gonna throw this invalid domain exception and here's the actual message. And then the same thing with the rest of them, it's just in that given when then format where we can say, given a series of events has occurred, when a particular command is called, then this is the event that's created. As I said at the beginning, I actually find it simpler to test a domain that uses event sourcing for this exact reason that it's just inputs and outputs. Your inputs are things that have happened, events that are in your event stream, you perform some action, some command on your domain, and you see the output, which are new events or if it's something invalid and you want to test invariants, you're checking the results or the exceptions. But it's really just as simple as inputs, which are events, and outputs, which are events. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.